Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel and happy Valentine's Day. Today I'm gonna to be sharing you one of my favorite recipes from the How Not To Die Cookbook by Dr. Michael Greger. This is one of my favorite whole food plant-based cookbooks. I make recipes from it all the time. And if you know me, then you know I'm a huge Dr. Greger fan. Well, today we're gonna to make a Valentine's Day dessert recipe. And we're gonna make the fudgy no-bake brownies, which is one of my absolute favorite recipes from Dr. Greger. It's on page 198, and I make these pretty often for special occasions. The last time I made them was for Christmas, and they're just so decadent, and it's actually more like a fudge than I would say a brownie, but they always go. We never have leftovers um, at a party when I bring them. They always go off the table, and they're so easy to make that I wanted to share it with you guys. So I won't have any of the measurements written out in the description box. I'll just have a link to the cookbook um, just because this is copyrighted. So just make sure you're paying attention to this video and I will say the measurements. So get a pen and paper out so you can write this down. Hey guys, it's future Brittany here to say that I say cacao every time it's supposed to be cocoa in this video. I'm editing it. I tried to even do like a voiceover. It's just weird. So I'll put in the text, it's cocoa, not cacao. I think I'm so used to using cacao that I just instantly said it that. But for Dr. Grigger's recipe, it's unsweetened cocoa powder. Um, I'm not sure how it would be with cacao. You could try it. I just follow his recipe. So sorry about the weird cacao cocoa mix up. But again, it'll be in text. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. This is the brand I get. It's from Whole Foods. It's pretty good. Alright, enjoy. So this makes 16 square brownies. It's rated as an easy recipe, so you can do it at home. And it's non-bake, so it pretty much needs an hour to set up before you're going to serve it. So make it a little bit ahead of time, but it's not like you need to prepare this way in advance. Uh, I have my new food processor that I'm going to use. My husband got this for me for Valentine's Day as one of my treats. If you follow my Instagram, you'll know that my food processor, I had a little bit of drama with getting a good food processor, so my last one fell apart pretty much on Super Bowl Sunday, um, which was inconvenient <laughs> when you're trying to cook for people. So I'm going to try out the new Cuisinart uh, food processor I have part of it right here which I'm going to use. This is the first thing I'm going to make in it. So I'll also have this linked below if you want to check it out and I'll let you know how it works out for us. So I'm going to get rid of this big giant box. So what you need for this recipe is a lined little brownie pan. It says an 8 inch square big pan. I always use this one. It works really well. I just lined it with parchment paper. Um, this is what I would typically make brownies in if I was going to find it and I noticed that it gives me a nice thick brownie, so I like this. Um, so you're gonna need one cup of walnuts, one and one third cup of pitted dates, one and a half cups of almond butter, one and a half cups of unsweetened cacao powder, I have that right here, and you're also going to need one third crushed pecans. So all of my ingredients are here, it's pretty simple. I'm actually going to make a second batch right after I film this video to take over for my parents for Valentine's Day. So this is the perfect treat to share with somebody or make for yourself or make just because. And I even found a little heart-shaped cookie cutter that we're gonna make heart-shaped brownies out of. So in honor of Valentine's Day. A little side note is that I get my raw almond butter from Trader Joe's. I like the creamy version. This is the most affordable I found it. So you could make your own. Sometimes convenient is nice. We always pick it up from Trader Joe's. Um, so we're gonna get started. So you need a food processor. It says to do the walnuts and dates uh, blended until finely ground. So we're gonna start with that. So we're gonna get our walnuts and my pitted dates. I'm gonna go grind these up until it's nice and well mixed and then I'll see you guys for the next part. But this is literally such an easy recipe. Like I said, I've made these brownies to travel on airplanes. I make them for holidays. It's one of my favorite recipes from this book. If you haven't got the How Not To Die cookbook, I highly recommend it. Every recipe I've tried has been a winner. So 
you can't go wrong with making these. But I'm gonna go and blend this up. I'll see you guys in a second. Once everything is well combined, that was really easy. Just make sure you get all of those pits out of your dates for sure. Um, and next step is to add the almond butter and then to process again. And then we're gonna add the cacao powder and then we'll get to the pecans just to make it look pretty. So almond butter right here, half a cup. This is gonna help make everything really stick. And if you don't have um, a raw almond butter, if you have a different kind of nut butter, I'm sure that would work as well but I just always follow this recipe because it's uh, always a hit. I've never tried it with like cashew or anything else. I'm sure it would be delicious with whatever you had though. I'm gonna go blend again and see you guys in a second. For this part, I did use a spatula to kind of scrape down the sides to make sure it was really well combined, but it starts to really form together. Now we can add our cacao and then pulse again. This is gonna give it the chocolate flavor that we want. I'm ready for it. <laughs> and then pulse until it's nice and combined and then we're going to start putting it into our baking pan. It's pretty easy, right? I love recipes like this. While filming, I got a knock on the door and my husband sent me these beautiful flowers, which is huge, and this really pretty balloon. Um, so I'm going to set this up behind us, but so beautiful and this is our 13th valentine's day together so thank you mark and yeah just i'm a little overwhelmed this is a really big arrangement this year um so i'm gonna go settle my dogs down they were kind of freaking out when the delivery guy came and set these up but they are so gorgeous oh my gosh so pretty i don't know if it comes up on camera but that arrangement is like the biggest one i've ever received it's so gorgeous. The florist you went to did like an amazing job. Oh my gosh. But back to the brownies. Um, you just want to scrape down the sides while you're doing it to make sure it's well incorporated. It should start sticking together. And then you can transfer it to your brownie pan. And again, I line that with parchment paper just so the cleanup's a little bit easier. I just kind of drop everything in. And then your hands are gonna get a little bit messy for this part, so go ahead and, if you have like a wedding ring on, um, make sure you clean hands. And we're gonna use, I like using my hands for this part. It gets a little messy, but that's okay. Um, what I do is I just kind of press it down and shape them into the shapes I want. So using my hands, I'm just gonna start pressing it together. And then everything really sticks because of the almond butter. So you can kind of, Start making your brownies. Um, I like to make them kind of even, so that it'll give me a nice shape when it's done. I always cut these in different ways. Sometimes I cut them into little pieces for fudge, because like I said, this is definitely more of like a fudgy brownie. And sometimes we cut them into brownie sizes. Today we're gonna do hearts for Valentine's Day. So just use your fingers to kind of mold the brownie shape. your brownies are all pressed in you can use your chopped pecans and press those in lightly this just makes it look really pretty um, it's also really nice for it a little bit of a crunch because all the other walnuts are really blended together so I just go ahead and spread that out and then I'm loosely pressing it in and that is it we're gonna put it in our refrigerator to chill for an hour before I cut them and I'll see you guys in an hour after that uh, but this is like super easy like I said, it goes every time I bring it to a party or an event. Everyone loves this recipe and I love how easy it is and quick. So you definitely want to make it. Plus it gives me that chocolate craving, which today I'm definitely having. So I'm really excited we're going to have this for Valentine's Day tonight. Once you have your pecans pressed, go ahead and refrigerate this for an hour and I'll see you guys after that so we can cut it and I can try one out a little bit early before my husband gets home. It looks so beautiful, can't wait to have it. It's been about an hour and my brownies are set. So you could just like 
cut these up like regular squares or smaller pieces and like I said it is more of a fudge than like a typical brownie um, but I have this really cute cookie cutter heart because it's Valentine's Day so we're gonna see if I can make some heart brownies Gosh, this is so cute. So cute. Let's see if it'll pop out okay. Really gentle with it. Oh, they made the cutest little hearts. Oh my gosh. I just found this at my local craft store, but I'm sure you can find it on Amazon as well. But it made a little heart. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these out. And then the little pieces, you could totally like leave them empty because it's the shape of the heart too and eat around it. That's probably what I'm going to do. I'm probably going to make a bunch of hearts and then just pick on the pieces in between them. But however you want to do, like I said, you could also leave them as squares. But this is so cute. I'm so excited for tonight to share these with my husband. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. And you could crush the pecans up even finer. I think that would help with the heart shapes. But this turned out so cute, so... You can see I have my little heart shapes. I have a couple left, but look how beautiful these turned out. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna show you guys an up close look at it, but this is the perfect little Valentine's Day treat. I'm gonna enjoy these so much tonight and probably snack on it while I'm editing this video. But if you have not got the How Not To Die cookbook, make sure you go get it. I'll have it linked below. It's literally one of my favorite whole food plant-based cooking cookbooks. It's great. Um, it has the daily dozen foods marked off in it and the fudgy no make brownies are perfect So if you guys make this leave me a comment below. Did you do anything different? Did you just make it how we do? We love this recipe and I hope you guys have a nice happy Valentine's Day You can make these for yourself or a loved one or you know whoever you want to share it with but you're gonna want to make these pretty much all year not just on a holiday they are so good and yummy. Perfect chocolate treat that's still whole food plant-based and good for you. So I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope you guys have a fantastic Valentine's Day. And I'll see you very soon. Bye. I have this bite right here. It's so good. Oh my gosh. That's like heaven. Oh my gosh.